Yo, what up? This is Luis Violent Bob Ross Pena. Come get lit with me on Blunt Force Trauma. What's up, y'all? I'm Jordan Colbert. You're tuning in to Blunt Force Trauma, the show where we highlight the benefits of cannabis in the world of combat sports. Today, I'm joined by my man, Luis Pena. How you doing, brother? Doing great, man. Thank you for being on, brother. I appreciate it. Appreciate you having me on. Today, we're going to be smoking this joint right here. You can tell me a little bit about smoking habits, bro. Tell me how you guys started smoking weed. Man, I just remember, like, I was 13, and uh, I was living in Cabot, Arkansas at the time. I just... Uh, one of my best friends, like he had some, he had some weed, and he was like, he asked me if I want to smoke. And we remember we rolled up a little blunt that time. It was like 12 a.m. on his porch. We rolled up a little joint, and smoked. It was funny. Yeah, it was, I, I, it was a funny experience just because I, I can remember so vividly, like my first time being high. I got super, super stoned off some mids. <laughs> Haven't we all, right? Yeah, right? I think that first time when you're a kid, I know how it is. I think the first time I smoked weed, it was with my homies. We were probably like 14 years old. Do you remember smoking off of the old tin cans when you <laughs> break the hole in the soda can? Oh, yeah. But being an athlete's a little bit different, right? Now that you're smoking weed in such a professional set setting, I'm sure it can get weird being a UFC fighter, especially, you know, you got you saw it and stuff right now. Tell me a little bit about that and what that's been like for you. Man, so it's like... Uh, yeah, most definitely. Like, that's the one thing um, I didn't really expect. I knew it was going to change. or I, I knew, like, it hasn't necessarily changed my smoking habits. But I knew, like, just smoking with Usada was going to be uh, different. Mm -hmm. um, it's just, like, it's funny because, like, every time they come in, they, like, they knock on my door at, like, 6 a.m. to come drug test me. Mm -hmm. And they're like, so when's the last time you smoked? And I'm like, um two hours ago and they're like what and I'm like yeah man I just usually like I wake up out of my bed roll over smoke a little J or it's like I'm sure they're usually little, super surprised know, each smoke. time too right yeah you know what I mean it, and it's like it's funny because we always have to declare like any uh, substances or any supplements that you might uh, use or anything like yeah. that so I'm always like every time I have to declare like marijuana and they're like how much copious amounts I don't, I don't a know a whole lot a whole lot yeah yeah being a fighter, though, I'm sure it also has benefits to you. I mean, especially when you're in camp, you're training usually five to seven days a week, multiple times a day, you know what I mean? And recovery is a big part of that. We see so many injuries in MMA. Um, how has it played a factor in your recovery and just your day-to-day -day going through training camp? See, I don't necessarily know, uh, or I, I mean, I'm not refuting any physical um, benefits that I may receive from smoking. But I don't necessarily use uh, marijuana to like recover so much. So much as like I I I kind of tell people that like fighting keeps me from being stressed about like the normal day to day stuff, and weed keeps me from being stressed about fighting. Yeah, if that makes sense. So it's more of a mindset thing for you. Exactly, like, like, you it keeps of... me from being like. Or having so much anxiety about it. Because it's like a very, you know, uh, it's a very stressful thing to like constantly day in and day out have to like essentially put your your pride and your ego to the test against like another person. Mm -hmm. yeah. Another train killer. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So from a mental standpoint, talk to me a little bit about how j just that anxiety that comes with preparing for another fighter. And you know you're going to be across that cage from another guy and just weed being that coping mechanism for you. Not necessarily even a coping mechanism, I would say, either, but just sort of to, to help you get in that mode, you know? It's funny because that's actually the biggest um, change between fighting on the regional circuit and fighting the UFC. I used to, uh, I used to use weed to get through my weight cuts, and mm. I used to be pretty stoned every time I fought before the UFC. During your actual fights? During my fights, yeah, most definitely. It's like, I, the way I look at it is... Um, when, when I'm stoned, like, yeah, people say, oh, it slows down your reaction times. And that might be true, but when I'm stoned, it's like I'm out there and I'm not necessarily thinking about – I'm still, like, aware defensively, but I'm not thinking about, oh, should I do this? It's just like – I'm like, let's see if this works. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like, it's 
there's no anxiety to to throwing things. I just go out there, flow, and like most of the time it just happens. So it helps you get into that flow state almost? Yeah, most definitely. Mm -hmm. From a standpoint of, okay, for example, we're in California right now. Weed, weed's kind of that thing, you know? We got legalization. Um, you're wearing this Nug shirt right now. Shout out Nug, by the way. Shout out Nug. Shout out Nug. Um, tell me how, it, from a business standpoint, how you've capitalized on sort of this, this whole movement that's going on in MMA. As far as marijuana goes, we got at least you know the Diaz brothers, we got the O'Malley's, we got the Luis Pena's. How are you taking advantage of it from a business side? Um, you know, it's really awesome, and it's funny that you uh, you bring up you know like a bunch of these current UFC fighters mm -hmm. that have like capitalized on it because uh, the guy that kind of brought me into this is an old UFC veteran, Tyson Griffin. He's the one that that hooked really? me up and. Uh, and got the my connection going with Nug. Um, he he's actually also a uh, partner with Nug as oh, well. Nice. Shout and out Tyson so, Griffin. Yeah, shout out my man Tyson Griffin. So yeah, it's like it's really interesting. Um, I've been able to kind of like as my platform has grown, I feel as though um, I've used like the marijuana uh, the association with like the marijuana business here in California. To, uh, to like reach a whole new demographic as well as um, kind of like plant the seeds to hopefully like start looking for something when I, when I retire. Yeah, for sure. Do you think it helps you connect with a whole different audience? Because I know a lot of MMA fighters, obviously, a lot of people around the world are smoking weed. But I, I almost feel like weed smokers is a demographic in itself. So you can have fans from both the MMA genre but also the stoner genre. Most definitely. Um, and it, I don't necessarily... I wouldn't necessarily say it's one of those things where I reach a whole new demographic. I wouldn't put it in those words so much as it it's... A, Makes you more relatable, maybe? Exactly. It's a another way for me to be able to relate with the demographic that I uh, already connect with. Yeah, You know what sure. I'm saying? It's another... Uh, another level that shows people that like I'm pretty much a regular dude just like them that just goes out my only my job is to like go out there and beat niggas up yeah for sure <laughs> <laughs> would you say that from a USADA standpoint the process has become sort of not I don't want to say cut and dry but you, you have it down to a science at this point you know how much not how much you can smoke but you know when you need to start tapering it off for your fight tell me when fight week for example you're going into fight week at what point do you start either cutting back or cutting off entirely so, normally I like try to, my first couple of fights I stopped um, a couple weeks out, you mm -hmm. know what I'm saying, like I stopped two or three weeks out, and then for the Steven Peterson and Matt Wyman fight, I don't know what it was, I was feeling bold and I just, I kept smoking up until like that Monday, mm -hmm. and then uh, I cut, I knew I was going to have to cut a ton of weight for the Peterson fight, so I knew I was going to be fine there. And then when it came to the Wyman fight, I had been like drinking so much water and like putting so much stuff, like putting it. It becomes much easier to flush out of your yeah. system at that point, right? So I, I kind of knew um, I was good. And like luckily I just didn't get popped by Usada at that time. Mm -hmm. But um, it's just like also one of those things where I also like the be like, it, like you said, it's, it is kind of down to a science. I know with like my body uh my body mass index and all that stuff like i know when i have to kind of like completely cut off and when uh like with you know the training regimen i have like it, it it does allow me to be able to like um skirt the line a little bit uh more than most yeah do you find yourself skirting that line often you would say no nah, i don't yeah. try to mm. Sometimes a nigga just won't be smoked. Like, I just don't. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, for I'm sure. Just like, at the same time, you're a professional athlete, but you want to live your life at the same time, you know? It's not and even that I want to live my life. It's that I get into such a routine. I'm a very routine-driven person in my camps. Like, I, try, I like to do the same thing over and over and over again. Um, you know, unfortunately, like, life doesn't really work that way yeah with a lot of 100%. things in, in camp you know when it comes to training and, and anything 
But it's like sometimes I just get stuck in that routine of like, all right, I smoke before I train. I do all this. You know what I'm saying? Like, And it's just like I don't want to get out of it because I don't want to have a bad day in the gym or something. Yeah. And, and like you – that's, can be, that's the mindset I get into when I yeah. when I like kind of do skirt that line, but it's like not even then um, am I ever truly worried. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So your last fight, Matt Wyman, we know how that played out. You're in a pretty good position going forward. I know you expressed interest in fighting. Um, you said November, uh, October, 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 and where are you going to be fighting next? Um, Tampa Bay. It'll Tampa be Bay. October twelfth. Okay, so you're going to be getting ready for, for that fight going forward now. Are you in training camp now? Yeah, most definitely. We just uh, kind of started, like I, I've officially started camp this last week and uh, the last couple of weeks, you know, I've been kind of getting back into shape for it. But uh, no, we're, we're officially underway, you know. I'm uh, kicking into high gear this whole rest of the time. That's nice, brother. How is we going to play a factor in this training camp? I know you're training how often during a training camp? Man, I train three times a day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, mm -hmm. twice, um, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday. And on and those days where you're going double days, how often would you say you're smoking? Would you say you smoke in between practices? Would you say you smoke <laughs> during practice? Uh, not, I wish during, but <laughs> no, no I, don't, I don't really, not during, but no, mm -hmm. I'm smoking like pretty much. I wake up, smoke, eat, smoke, train, smoke, sleep, smoke. Train again, smoke. And like you said, this kind of helps you control that mental, right? Yeah, not even that, but it's like, man, when you're training that much, it's just like, dude, you want to be high. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? Sure. It's just like... It's a nice reward, too, I'm sure, after a, a yeah, long, long, grueling hard training. hard session, you know, there's nothing better than... Something that's kind of cool you down with. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Especially, like, I smoke sativa during the day while I'm training, during mm -hmm. camp and everything, so it's, like, a nice, like, pick-me-up, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was going to ask you that, too, about preferences, especially when you're in training camp. Do you find, like, smoking actual flour like we're smoking right now, is that harder on your lungs? I know you said you're not really much not much of a vape person. No, I I try to stick to flour most definitely. I try to just stick to uh, stick to the old pipe just because um, I find the that vaping is harder on my lungs more than anything. That's so surprising to me. Yeah, usually like, you get the opposite from people. No, no, man, I get a deeper cough uh, and like I just I feel it in my I feel vaping in my lungs where it's like when I smoke flour it's like. In and out, you know. Mm -hmm. There's there's no like lingering after effect. Okay, I guess that. But can that make also sense. that also might be from years of smoking weed, mm -hmm. and um, I'm sure a lot of it also comes down to it's a personal preference thing. Yeah, that's yeah, what you definitely do. think. But yeah. I, I I think that, but at the same time, I definitely think um, that vaping is harder on your lungs. I I personally like I'm not a, I'm not like trying to to like say anything negative about it but I yeah, personally no, think that uh, over, like over like traditional flour just because they they're, they're, they've got to add chemicals or something to the to that oil I, I would imagine especially mm -hmm. in those like uh, so flour is just a safer bet for you I think so I th as, a, as an athlete yeah, yeah for sure if I'm gonna smoke yeah alright brother why don't you look at the camera tell them what you got going on tell them about your next fight let's wrap this thing up brother alright man we're going uh I'm fighting here on UFC Tampa here October 12th in Tampa Bay, Florida. Catch me on ESPN Plus or ESPN. Um, I can't really announce the opponent yet, but coming soon though, it's going to be a banger. There you go. All right, guys, that'll be it. Thank you for watching Blunt Force Trauma. Go ahead and subscribe to my YouTube channel and look forward to the next episode, man. Thank you guys very much.